Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fashion Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith, and I'm here, as always, with Marcy Carmack. And at Fashion Coffee Hour, you know, our, our working thesis is that beauty uh, and fashion drive culture. And wherever there's culture, people are uplifted uh, emotionally, economically, and spiritually. And my other personal other favorite topics are, of course, you know, sex, religion, and politics. But <laughs> I don't usually get to work them in uh, so directly as I'm as we're I think we're going to be able to today, and that is the topic of of religion. So, Marcy and I both uh, had the pleasure during the pandemic of rediscovering the Washington National Cathedral, and uh, Marcy was especially pleased when she tuned in to see one of her old friends, Dana Casello. Not at Stanley. You remember Dana from San Francisco? Yes, she was my priest at St. Luke's. And uh, we don't usually think of a minister having a fashion sense, but but Dana did. She definitely did. And I put her on my blog. And was that indicative of, of who Dana was or just of the, the culture and climate of living in San Francisco at the time? It was indicative of Dana. She was very effervescent, uh, effervescent personality. So I, I titled it Prayer Chic. That was the name of the post? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's terrific. Well, Dana preached this last weekend at the Washington National Cathedral, and, and she shared really, it was really actually quite, in all honesty, a, a touching and a very personal story about fashion and how it's figured in her in her life and in her journey. And so we're going to take a look at this today and indulge a topic of... Indulge Stanley. Indulge Stanley, which is what it's all about, and the topic of fashion and religion. Growing up, my family had plenty of food. Food insecurity was not our issue, even though I do remember eating fried bologna towards the end of the month. What I do know is that money was tight, so there weren't discretionary funds for beautiful things when it came to furniture, art, clothing, or shiny objects. I'm a visual person, so I appreciate, dare I say crave, what I call eye candy. I hanger for color, fabrics, textures, spaces such as this one. My heart palpitates when I walk into an art museum. Several years ago, I had an aha moment when I was asked to explore the unspoken deprivations that fuel my desires, the hunger beneath the hungers. Admittedly, and I'm not proud of this, I love to shop. I'll say it. I love to shop. <laughs> the hunt of a good bargain beckons me. My girlfriends and I, we hunt together. It's how we escape and commune. Please know that I have never had real money to spend. I wouldn't dare darken the door of a famous couture designer. No, I'm more of a flea market queen, a member of the consign consignment store set who stalks the racks for upscale designers. One distinct memory, a painful one, came to me as I explored the source of my shopping issue. Up until around the fifth grade, my mother sewed almost everything I wore. But one August, we went off to the fancy children's shop to buy new school clothes. I was beside myself. It was one of the greatest days of my young life. I still remember what the dressing room looked like and what it felt like to try on and model so many wonderful things. I remember lying in bed that night unable to sleep because I was so excited. There was one catch, though, but it didn't seem to matter at the time. My mother put it all on layaway. The hunger beneath the hunger, 
She never paid it off to get it out of layaway. And I didn't dare ask her about it. It's almost embarrassing to share this with you. It seems so trivial because I was not denied food or shelter or my parents' unconditional love. None of that. But that incident and a few others like it, I discovered are the source of my shopping spending habits. For years, I struggled with conflating my own self-worth with what I was denied or could not possess. I hid my hunger because I was ashamed that I wanted and needed too much. I certainly didn't think God would spread a table in the wilderness for me. I do now. Well, thank you, Dana. That was really lovely uh, sentiment and a touching story. Uh, Dana goes on in the sermon to explain that um, God does know our many, many needs. And indeed, you know, we really don't even know what to ask for, but God knows what we need. And he does supply our needs, and we don't really need to covet uh, fashion or beauty because it is provided in our daily living, and we can appreciate it in fashion through what's provided. And in that sense, it is it is nurturing and sustaining. So really appreciated Dana's message. And uh, Dana is one of our, our favorite people. We love Dana. My personal favorite, of course, is Jan, but I do love Dana. I sent Dana an email this morning and, and suggested that we should try to accessorize onto others as we would have them accessorize onto us and uh, that we all may be delivered from the likes of uh, TJ Maxx and that someday maybe if we're all lucky we will dwell together in the designer sportswear department at Berg Griff Goodman together so <laughs> that, was my, that was my blessing for Dana and she did get a chuckle out of that and I appreciate Dana's sense of, of good humor and good fun. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. We love you, and we look forward to seeing everyone at Fashion Coffee Hour. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Take care. Bye-bye.